my name is Dux Raymond Sai, um, which innovative geek. We're out of uh, Washington, D.C. and Atlanta, Georgia, and I've been working with this technology, SharePoint, related technologies for 12 years, even before it was called SharePoint. Very passionate about this, a lot of great potential, especially as a business platform. But to get our conversation going, I just want to clarify because there's been uh, uh, confusion as to what I do. That's not me. <laughs> the same last name, I guess. <laughs> I've been uh, working with SharePoint more, started from a technical perspective, but these days really looking at, looking at working with customers at the enterprise level to look at a couple of things. Number one, making sure that it drives business value, which unfortunately a lot of companies are not reaping the business value. You know um, about 80% of Fortune 500 companies have this wonderful platform. It's a 12-year-old product, but 90% of these companies are using it as a glorified file share. Sound familiar? I'm talking about all of you, right? And companies are questioning the investment now, and we're paying too much for this file share. True enough, that's all you use it. So what we're going to do in this conversation is, first of all, I'm going to talk to you about this idea of a platform, and more importantly, how can you take advantage of it? Again, my name is Dots, and... Um, uh, I'm with Innovative E, and I wrote the very first business focus book around SharePoint. So, for just being here, I'll give everybody a copy if you're interested. SharePoint for Project Management. Just fill out the email later and hand it to me. I'll make sure I send you a copy. Okay? So, let's get uh, this presentation started. So, uh, we're going to talk about this idea of an enterprise revolution. And to some of us, we may think, when is it coming, Ducks? I don't know uh, if we're ready or not. Well, the question shouldn't be, are you ready? Because the revolution is here. I mean, think about this. These are the four telltale signs of this enterprise revolution. Number one, we're in this age where BYOD, or bring your own device, is in vogue. I mean, think about it. A lot of your uh, colleagues, your employees, not only are using their day-to-day -day tools on their uh, workplace, but they have different devices from you know, Androids, iPhones, to Windows Phone, maybe. And then your executives, they love their iPads, right? Can't stop. Now, what about software? I mean, today we're in a day and age where the business just can't wait for IT to get there to help them. What do they do? Oh, IT, we need something so we can work with the vendor. Uh, can you give us a website or some collaboration tool? IT is like, oh, we're too busy. We'll grow up. And then what does the business do? Whatever. I'm going to swipe my credit card, get box, get Dropbox. I'm going to swipe my credit card and get Basecamp. Anybody use Basecamp anymore? Again, it's here. The other telltale sign of how, uh, how we know that the revolution is here is just the speed of business. Decisions happen so fast these days. Um, you no know, stock market's doing good one day, and then the other time. I mean, who would have thought? Somebody putting out a video in July of 2012. A few months later, it's the most watched video, and the guy made $8 million. Not sour bread being here, but it seems like we're doing the wrong job. <laughs> and then we're also in the age of doing more with less. Countless times I've talked to IT organizations, Docs, our budget has been cut 30% because we're not a profit center, yet the business expects the same services and more from us. What do we do? And then last, last but not the least, we're in this age of what I would call collaboration. We're in this age where engagement is huge, be it internal and external. Gone are the days where we just rely on a hierarchical, one-way serial type of interaction. We're in the age of Facebook. We're in the age of social. Now, we like it or not, it's here. I mean, think about the younger generation today. In their consumer life, right, technology, social tools are just part of their DNA. Well, what are we doing about it in the enterprise? No, wait, no enterprise social. We don't like people putting a picture of their cats on the internet. Well, that's not it. Because if we look hard on today's generation, the next workforce, the next uh, generation workforce, what do they do? What's their characteristic? Well, number one, they multitask. I mean, you know, they're just kind of into the generation where stuff just happens left and right. They, you know, they get by. They're good. They're good. They communicate in real time. 
I was uh, I was in a car uh, taking uh, my some of the kids at church to uh, an activity. They're not talking, but they're all giggling. I'm looking at them. They're all on their phones. I'm like, what are you doing? Are you texting each other? No, I'm not texting. Are you Facebooking each other? No, we're using Twitter. They're talking to each other that way. They work anytime, anywhere with anything. Today's social generation expects <coughs> seamless technology experience. I took my son to uh, Disney. He's eight now. And I recall when he was about five, I forgot to bring, um, you know, my, my cell phone died. Our camera was in the car. So I bought one of those Kodak digital cameras. Not digital, you know those disposable cameras that you buy at the Disney store and you charge 20 bucks for it? So when I took a picture, my son was like, can I see, can I see? See what? I want to see what the picture looked like. Just, this doesn't work that way. He goes, why not? Because he expects, from all the kinds of cameras he's seen since the day he was born, there's like a preview screen. You can swipe, you can zoom in and zoom out, not as he's supposed to. Today's generation keeps tabs on his colleagues and peers. Again, we think about Facebook. We don't consciously and purposely Wonder what Mark's doing. Let me check Mark out. No, we have feeds, right? It streams through. We know who had their birthday, what vacation they took. We keep tab on. Now, while all that's great in the consumer world, how does this translate to the enterprise? Well, if you think about it, there's a lot of value to this in the enterprise because today. You know what the number one enterprise collaboration tool is? You want to guess? This was a formal survey done by Gartner. What's the number one tool the enterprise used today to collaborate? Number one. Really? Where's that report? Let me check my email. Where's that update? Let me check my email. I mean, for crying out loud, we're in 2013. Everybody has a Galaxy S5. We're waiting for the iPad 10. We have GPS in our cars. We have TiVo at home because we have to record Dancing with the Stars. So we use a 1973 freaking technology to collaborate. It wasn't intended to be. So when we think about social and think about our enterprise, one thing I think that, that a lot of people is struggling with is, okay, what's the value? And I'll show this to you in a second. But what I want to make sure is we understand what enterprise social needs. There's a lot of misunderstanding and misconception. And I love, love, love this definition from Mark. Can you guys read it with me? Yeah, let's concentrate. All right, you. One, two, three. Enterprise social is an important method for enhancing communication, coordination, and collaboration for business purposes. Did it say anything about boosting? likes, or follow, or tag. No. Two weeks ago, I was working with a customer. They're going to roll out SharePoint 2013, Yammer, the whole works, to 80,000 of their employees around the world. And I was advising the IT director, and he said, oh, Docs, what do you think? You know, we're going to build these templates with my news feed, with wikis. I go, whoa. Why? Just like you, in silence in the room makes me very insecure as an immigrant, feeling that my English is not good enough. And I asked another question. I said, okay. Okay. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, why do you think you need news feeds, wikis, blogs? Isn't that the social stuff? That's the business. That's what the business asks for. we got to keep up. we got to keep up with what? Tell me what a wiki can do to Miss Sally in accounting who's processing payroll at the end of the month. Tell me. If you cannot answer that question, a wiki to me is only good for scratching in the cup. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Okay. We always lose sight of the fundamentals. Y'all with me? We get so caught up in all these techno buzz, analyst recommendations. Well, they're valid. Bring it home. What does it mean to me? If it doesn't mean anything to me, don't do it. Now, I'm going to show you five steps on how you can maximize enterprise social, which in effect can drive culture change. Because one key aspect we always forget, the reason why SharePoint has a bad taste in people's mouth. You got those people, they call it SharePoint. 
drink these in Chevron socks, right? Is, is our approach has been very technology focused. And SharePoint is so different than any other technology we work with you where that technology alone just won't cut it. So, so how do we do it? Okay, let me share these five steps with you. First step. The first step to drive culture change and maximize enterprise social technologies is to gain executive engagement. You know, one of the things that I find doing this kind of work is folks at the highest level who wrote the check who said, we want SharePoint has no freaking clue. It's not their fault, right? Because the problem is either number one, wait, nobody works for Microsoft. Number one, they've been sold to, hey, look at the six pillars. Ooh, I'm gonna hypnotize you now. Buy SharePoint. Or second is, oh, look at all these snazzy, bright, shiny lights go by. While all that's great, the problem is, again, it doesn't tie back to business value. Now, how do you do that, Alex? How do you tie it back to business value? So let me share an example, and I'll show you an example in a second. Number one, three years ago, a um, CIO of a law firm in New York called me up in January. He said, hey, docs, can I talk to you about something? I go, okay. I saw you in an executive briefing talking about the business value SharePoint, you know, I like what you're talking about, so here's my situation. The economy's bad, IT budget has been cut 30%, let some people go, I still have to deliver the same set of services to my business. Now show me how SharePoint can do that. That's the kind of conversation you want to get into. That's not the kind of conversation IT people are comfortable with. Y'all with me? So. That I do. I say, all right, I can certainly do that. But tell you what, Mr. Uh, Big Boss, number one, let's take a very low risk approach on how I can prove it to you. He goes, okay. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slice of your day to day business life in your company, and I'm going to prove to you SharePoint can bring a lot of value, save you money, make people happy, all that good stuff. He goes, okay. He said, uh, so I go, so you have 500 people between US and Europe. He goes, yep. Yeah. Bunch of, more of, most of them are lawyers. He goes, yep. He goes, yep. And I suspect they do meetings, yes? He goes, yeah. So I suspect when they do meetings, they part their meeting software. In this case, they use Microsoft products Outlook. They send them a meeting invite, and they put all the attachment and send it to everybody. He goes, yep. And then after the meeting, there's action items fly back and forth. Everybody's copied all these attachments, yes? He goes, yes. So I'm going to solve that problem. So first things first, now let's audit how big are people's email inboxes. So he came back, he said, on the average, people's email inboxes are three gigs. At that point, he says, whatever, you know, hardware storage is cheap. I go, really? What's the total cost of maintaining this? You're a law firm, you gotta be compliant. You're under, you know, all these government rules. What's the cost of not only storage, but also backing it up, the person doing all this, and what's the cost of if the CEO gets mad because he can't find information in his email inbox. So what's the cost of all that? So we came up with some number. So what we did is, okay, so here's what, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how I can save money in this slice of your business. Number one, we're gonna teach people on how they can better facilitate meetings with this thing called Meeting Workspace. It's a feature built into SharePoint and Outlook. You don't even have to buy it. Because uh, in case you don't know, the fundamental engine of SharePoint is actually a Windows. It's called, today it's called SharePoint Foundation. If you have a Windows server, you got it. You don't have to buy anything else. And this feature called Meeting Workspace is built in and it interacts with Outlook. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell people they're still gonna do their meeting invites, but instead of putting all their attachments, their agenda in the invite, y'all follow me? They're gonna hit a button that says create meeting workspace and then put all the information about the meeting there. And once they hit send, they're not going to send attachments. All they're going to send is an invite with a link to this meeting repository. Number one, it's low risk. I didn't tell them to buy anything. Number two, to the people who's going to do this, it's low risk. Oh, it's not like, oh, you're going to learn SharePoint. No. Hey, everyone, we're going to show you how you can better do meetings. We've been playing to IT that, you know, you want something to better do meetings, here it is. And it's easy. Instead of putting attachments, you still do the same thing. Just click this button. One hour training to the users, this whole thing took about two months. We had our ROI calculation four months later. 
part of the exercise is that everybody knew six months later, email inboxes would be reduced to 500 emails, which is fine. Four months later, came back, number one, these are gonna happen, because they can find stuff. Number two, right, he said, Docs, all our metrics are around you know, reducing storage, reallocating my resources, uh, taking care of SharePoint instead of dealing with backups and all that when users need to, to get to stuff. That has been a good thing. You know what, Docs, there's one thing we didn't really think about and measure, but we're actually saving money. What's that? You know, at corporate, we had three T1 lines. You know, T1, T1 is like internet connection. We had three T1 lines coming in because, at, you know, at a certain point in time, people just send attachments to a lot of people. Imagine if you send 10 attachments to 10 people, you just send 100 files. So we need so much bandwidth. But since people aren't doing that anymore, guess what? We got rid of the other T1. Ka ching, ka ching, ka ching. No problem. So what's my point here, Danny? When you engage with executives, I mean, while there's the nice marketing spiel about SharePoint, bring it down to what does it mean in your world? And there's a lot of wonderful use cases. Start with the small things that's low risk and low uh, low key. And then past that, then you think about the big things. Because I see a lot of companies get caught up on this make of SharePoint projects. Ooh, let's hook it up with SAP, CRM, run DMC. No, daily steps. See, when you think about SharePoint, SharePoint is truly, truly a business platform. And a lot of people don't understand this, right? What, what do you mean, Docs? I thought SharePoint was an intranet thing. That's what we have in our company, you know, a little portal. Every department has their site. We pop, put files in there. Well, that's true, but that's not the only thing it does. It's not a one-trick pony. You, with, with a SharePoint platform, you can utilize it for business-specific applications in a single platform. And not only that, one thing we miss is on the other end of the spectrum, it ties in nicely to the tools people already use day in, day out. You know what the two killer apps in the enterprise today is? What are the two tools that people can't live without in your life? Email's one, right? What's the other? No, the specific applications. Excel. It's actually three, Outlook, Excel, and Word. People can't live without those. It works hand in hand with tools people use, even if it's not Microsoft. You know, Docs, I get that conceptually, but show me, okay? I'm gonna show you a new use case. So, uh, so I'm gonna bring up, yes, I use a Mac, get over it. I've been a Mac user for the last eight years, and I love it. Um, so one of the things, uh, let's see, One second. Let me go down here. So, here you go. So, this is an, an example SharePoint site. By the way, this is uh, SharePoint 2013. Um, I'll show you a couple other features, but here's one of the key things I want to point out. Right? So, this is uh, a SharePoint project site where we have all our projects and, and whatever. Right? So, one of the things we do in our company is you know, we use SharePoint for internal portals. We also use it for project management. And one of the things that happens in any project, there are project events, right? There are project events. So, you know, for me, I'm involved in this project. Uh, click on it, okay? So let's say I'm gonna put the kickoff meeting. So, you know, um, again, nothing out of the ordinary. It's just like any other website out there you're familiar with it. Project came up. All right, I did it in my Mac. Uh, so let's say it's gonna start um, uh, Thursday, seven o'clock, whatever. It's all good. Now, one of the things, uh, start to bring up this, this one too. One of the things I think that, that we fail in, in a lot of our SharePoint initiatives is Again, we, we, we get too caught up on telling people, go to SharePoint, go to SharePoint, right? And at the end of the day, it's not just about SharePoint. I mean, imagine if me as a project manager, I entered an, uh, a calendar entry directly on the website. Well, that's great. But I've got people in my company, so I'm going to jump into my, um, my Windows environment. But I've got people in my company that, you know, they live and breathe in Outlook, okay? 
So the same information, what if, right, what if they can easily say connect to Outlook, and this is something that other technologies and platform cannot do. Uh, so when I say connect to Outlook, make sure you want to do this, what just happened here? So this is my copy of Microsoft Outlook. So I have my personal calendar. Now check this out. The executive presentation project calendar is not visible which means any time a, a, a meeting entry is entered on the project site, it's going to show up in my copy of Outlook. It's going to be integrated in all the reminders and, and updates, and if I sync it with my phone, it's going to show up on my phone as well. Now, not only that, not only can I see entries from the project site, guess what? I can interact with it directly in Outlook and say, let's do the requirements meeting, and hit save. That same piece of information, friends, is now visible. Just a refresh here. That same piece of information that was entered in Outlook is now visible on the project site. Did you ever think of a day you're going to update a website with Microsoft Outlook? Y'all with me? You feel the love? Now, that's the idea of a platform. Now, for those looking at that, well, Great, Docs. Looks cool. I can use Outlook, but we don't have 2013. That's not even a new feature. This whole integration point with Office and Windows has been there since Outlook 03 and SharePoint 03. It's a 10-year-old technology. What's the value? Well, here's the value. Imagine if, if I put my project-related information it doesn't matter on the website, in Outlook, but SharePoint as a platform can interact with all this stuff. I don't have to deal with, oh, I got to enter it in Outlook. Oh, I got to enter it on my phone. Oh, I got to enter it on that website. Oh, I got to enter in the most powerful database out there called Access. Yo, follow me. That's a great value. We are doing a disservice to our companies if all we pitch about SharePoint is somewhere you can share files. That's why users look at SharePoint as a big problem. We don't talk about how do you get your job done faster, better, sooner. The other step on how you can drive change and have your companies maximize SharePoint and enterprise social tools is you have to develop relevant use cases with business. Right? What do I mean by that? It has to be specific to common needs, getting their job faster, better, sooner. You know, I know I, I joked earlier, but I'm sure it's true. How many of you in your companies have people hating SharePoint? They say SharePoint sucks. Yeah. So, so I have an advisory. What's your name, sir? Robert. Robert. So when you go back to work on Monday, Thursday, Friday, so if you see those users again, look at them in the eye. If they tell you SharePoint sucks, this is what you tell them. <laughs> It's so easy to blame a tool, but SharePoint doesn't suck. You suck. It's a freaking tool. Andrea, you're a tool. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, and, and again, unless there's context, yeah, the technology sucks. Why do I need a wiki? Why do I need a blog? What's up with this newsfeed, my site? I'm with you, brother. If it doesn't get my job done faster, better, sooner, making me, giving me more money, forget all that. I'll use my email. How do you do that, Docs? I mean, how do you make it relevant and how do you shape it so that as a platform, it helps people get their job done better, faster, sooner? Well, the way you do it is you identify solutions. Do not showcase features. What do I mean by that? We're so, we're so caught up in a very IT-centric approach, and this is how SharePoint's deployed in companies. How do you like your SharePoint? You like a team site, surveys, wikis. You want to supersize it? Let's do BCS next. That's what we do. They don't say no, of course, but what ends up happening is this nice Ferrari, is it cheap? Ends up sitting in the garage with a bunch of files in it. Because people just learned how to use a bike yesterday. They're like, well, this car is nice, it's too complicated, I don't have time for it, I got a lot of work to get done. I'm just going to ride my bike. I know it's slower, but it'll get me to work. It's called email. And accept. Leave it in the ground. 
The problem is users or the business today don't look at SharePoint as their business critical tool. What do you mean? People go to work, email is business critical. People can't live without email, which is great. People can't live without Excel or Word, but they don't think of SharePoint that way. They think of SharePoint as, as, as like their storage, put stuff. And the other big way they think of SharePoint is, I don't like how it looks, make it pretty. While you can use SharePoint as a public facing site, very pretty, they set the priority. You don't have people going to work and saying, I don't like how Outlook looks, make it pretty. I don't like how Excel looks, they don't think of it that way. Right? Y'all with me? Sorry about my heavy southern accent, I'm from the deep south. <laughs> Southeast Asia, that is, Manila, Philippines. <laughs> so I'm going to show a little video here. So here's an example, right? When we talk about use cases. So Alex starts his day at home using his Mac. He's working on a project. Okay, you know, he's looking at this stuff, and he needs to talk to Docs, right? Keep in mind he's at home. So he fires up the browser, fires up his email, and I'm just going to hit mute here in a second. And uh, He's, he's going to start working and, and just look at what needs to be done, what tasks needs to be done. So he fires an email on the browser, he pings Ducks and starts chatting with Ducks on a Mac in his Safari or Firefox browser, whatever it is. He needs to get his work done, right? The key here is not just about SharePoint. When Alex does that, Ducks is on the road, he got the link the IM conversation, because he has to, he can do it on his phone, doesn't have to be Windows Phone, he gets a message and he's gonna update his task on his phone. As Docs updates his task on his phone, that piece of update will now be reflected on the project site. Right? And as it gets reflected, when Docs gets to work, guess what? He opens up Outlook, that same bit of information is also displaying in Outlook seamlessly. Y'all with me? That is the power of the platform. He can email everyone in the project site by just responding to the site, because the site has what's called a site mailbox. It's kind of like a mailing list. Every SharePoint site today has a site mailbox. So not only can he interact with people with SharePoint, he can still use email, but guess what? All the files on the project site also shows up in Outlook, because that's where he works. So again, okay, what I'm talking about here is when you want to help your users think about relevant use cases. People work on projects. Well, guess what? They don't just use a tool. They need a bunch of tools, and there's no tool set out there, at least in a platform perspective, that could deliver all this, but SharePoint-related technology. Y'all with me? You make people work on their terms. I'm the kind of guy who likes my phone. Work on your phone. I'm the kind of person who likes Outlook. Work in Outlook. SharePoint can be the glue that holds everything together, and that's the power of the platform. Is this helpful? Don't call your solution SharePoint, right? Don't hide the fact that it's SharePoint. I mean, it's a great platform, but call it as it what it's intended for. Is it an intranet? Is it an HR onboarding system? Is it a project management system? I mean, come on. In the mid-90s, when intranets first came out, what technology did we use to build intranets? Anybody? What was that? Yeah, HTML, right? If you were fancy, you got CGI Perl back then. By the way, today's the 30th anniversary of the World Wide Web. It was 20 years ago that the World Wide Web became a thing. Still sight lines. But going back, so the intranet back then was first created HTML, IIS, ASP, whatever. Now, did people walk around your office and say, Where's that HR policy meant? Oh, it's in the HTML. It's in the IIS. No. It's in the internet. How come it's so easy for us today? Where's it's in SharePoint? What's your mom's name? SharePoint. Right. Let me extend this, gang. Let me uh, make you think some more here. Let's go back to my project site. So this is the same projects that I was uh, showing everyone earlier, or at least in that video, so quick video I recorded. Uh, by the way, this whole session is being recorded, so again, if you fill that out, I'll send you a video of this, the PowerPoint, all this stuff, right? So here's the project site. 
Um, I was working with a customer about two years ago, and we were helping them take advantage of their SharePoint platform. Just, just like a lot of people, they've had it for five years, the big file dump. So one of the first use cases we picked is around project management or project collaboration. Because what we found is at any given point in time, they have 100 projects. And they use a combination of email, Excel, network share to manage projects. And so do you in your work, right? So I said, okay, we're going to change this. We're going to help you shape your SharePoint platform, number one, to be used to improve your project management um, practices. But number two, you see a lot of value in this because it's going to improve and streamline a lot of your processes. So we shaped it, we trained them, and then one of the, it's the idea that we'll have a one-stop shop, right? Everything about the project, your documents, your calendar, your tasks, everything will be in a single repository that's integrated with a lot of different technologies people use. Now, one of the things we found out is at the end of the month, they have a process where every project manager sends their expense report to Miss Sally in accounting. Let's call it Miss Sally. So imagine Miss Sally, every month, we get 100 Excel sheets in her email inbox, take it out for her in my documents, Smash it up for a monthly project expenses report. Y'all with me? So I asked Miss Sally, Miss Sally, how much time do you spend doing this? She goes, oh, maybe six hours, seven hours every month collectively. I've been doing this for eight years. I go, Miss Sally, what if I can help you cut that time down in half? Instead of six, seven hours, I'm going to help you only spend four hours. She goes, that would be great because, you know, in some months, uh, I wouldn't even have to do overtime just to get this report done. You don't miss out, right? But she said one thing. She goes, Docs, I'm interested, but you know what, what? You know, I'm an Excel kind of person. As long as I can do it in Excel and I don't have to learn anything new, I'm all for it. I'm retiring in two years. I don't need to learn anything new. Now you know Miss Sally. I know Miss Sally, that's cool. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a feature in Excel. She goes, really? I know everything about Excel. Like, yeah, not this one. So here's the new process. Project managers, instead of emailing you an Excel file every month, we're going to have project managers enter their expenses directly on the project site in the spirit of having a one-stop shop. Everything's here. And as soon as they do that, automatically, those expense information would show up in an Excel file sitting on your desktop. Would you like that? Sure, no more emails, no more emails. We're gonna cut that down, okay? So how does that work? So here's what we're gonna do, Miss Sally. Um, so I'm gonna fire up Excel, and I'll just put you know, some simple stuff here. Item, cost, whatever expenses. So let's say we bought a projector. Uh, we're, we're populated with some data. We bought a computer for the presentation. And um, gang, uh, you know, we spent 500 bucks for the projector, and maybe $5,000 that's uh, let's just say one thousand dollars for the computer, or whatever. And then I'm gonna change this column to uh, the right format, currency. Okay. So so notice, Miss Sally, we just entered some data. Here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take this information and convert it to what's called an Excel table. And as soon as I do that, and, and Miss Sally, all I'm doing here is out of the box. I didn't, you know, do anything extra. Check this out. Publish and allow sync. So as soon as I click that, it's asking for a SharePoint site to sync this information with. So instead of typing it manually, I'm just going to copy the web address of this project site. Okay? And then we're going to call this the uh, 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 Document Strategy Forum uh, Expenses, whatever, uh, Presentation Expenses. Okay? And then I'm going to hit Publish. Again, in the spirit of a platform. Excel took this information, contacted the project site, logged me in, it has to be secure, make sure that I can do what I'm trying to do, it took my credentials, took this information, created what's called a list on the project site, published this information, and kept the connection. So what does it look like now? So let's check it out, friends. So if I go to uh, view, all right, so when I do view, Check that out, DSF presentation expenses, right? And not only that, I'm gonna take this, so, so let's say your project manager, I'm gonna go to my Mac environment here, your project manager, you guys have Mac users? Especially marketing, right? So I'm gonna take this information and, and pop it in my Mac environment, it's the exact same thing. 
That's one of the great things with SharePoint 2013. It's truly cross-platform, cross-browser compatible. It doesn't matter what you use, tablet, phone, Mac, PC, Linux, experience is all the same. So now the new process is project managers, instead of sending an Excel file every month, they can go to their project site, you know, one-stop shop, put in everything they spent for, we bought a car for $50,000. By the way, this is a subtle thing. Anybody familiar with data sheet view? Check this out. I'm on my Mac using Firefox in the data sheet view. Because in 2013, it's not limited to IE. In the previous versions of SharePoint, this spreadsheet table-like capability can only work in IE. In 2013, it doesn't matter, which is great. Now, as soon as the project manager enters that information, let's go back to Miss Sally, right? SharePoint has built-in capabilities to send alerts. So Miss Sally might have gotten an alert saying, hey, the expenses was just updated. So Miss Sally can go back to her Excel spreadsheet and hit synchronize, bada bing, bada boom, voila. That same piece of information on the project site is now available on an Excel sheet on Miss Sally's desktop. But wait, there's more. Not only can she get the information, she's looking at the receipts and invoices. Oh, oh, oh hold on, hold on. You didn't buy a car, you bought a car fit. It's 500 bucks. She can manipulate the data in Excel and push it back to that project site. And as soon as she does that, friends, uh, let's go back to the project site. I need to show you the expenses. Let's see it hitting refresh. There you go. Carpet, 500 bucks. Right. You talk about business value. What just happened? Miss Sally doesn't have to deal with email. As soon as the information is updated on the project site, it could be on my phone, it syncs with a spreadsheet with a tool that Miss Sally loves. You talk about adoption, this is adoption. You see, we get so caught up in telling people, go to SharePoint, go to SharePoint, go to SharePoint. I don't freaking care. I love my Excel now. A way to gain adoption is to start with tools people are comfortable with. Email, Excel. Now, I know it's not enough, but they'll outgrow it, and they, once they're hungry, once they're bought in, they can take advantage of the other stuff. All right, bless you. They're trying hard up there. You're using the latest tools, 2013. We don't have this, but guess what? This thing I just showed you, it's not new. This feature and capability has been there since Excel 03 and SharePoint 03. Who doesn't know about this? Raise your hand. It's okay. I won't tell. Do you think there's value in your company for something like this? Miss Sally? Ah, it's easy. Excel, that's my thing. It's fine. I talked to her three months later. She said, you know, that's what I did. I created 99 other spreadsheets. I tied it to the 99 other project sites. And I created like a um, 100 first spreadsheet for the summary. You know how in Excel you can have a summary sheet, pulls the data. For pivot tables and charts. Boy, Docs, you saved me two hours, at least in the last three months, and I, if I can get better at this, you saved me two hours. I didn't have to do overtime. You want to calculate business value? Miss Sally's happy, she doesn't have to deal with email stuff. She doesn't have to do overtime, which means the company doesn't have to pay overtime. That's what I call ROI. And that's just a small slice of the business. Sally, what do you do now with two hours of sleep? Learn how to use Facebook. <laughs> That's a different problem. So, so gang, when you want to drive culture change and adoption, it has to be relevant. Now when I ask you, why do you have this synchronization, right? Why do you want to do synchronization? Well, guess what? Because it's going to help Miss Sally save two, three hours every month. Why do we need this wiki? If you're IT people, and even if you're IT, you cannot answer that, don't even do it. What's the definition of social again? It's a method to enhance collaboration, communication, and coordination for business purposes. And we just did that with Excel and SharePoint. You didn't think they would come Excel is social? It is. Now, step three. Is this helpful, gang? Okay? It's funny, so uh, 
So we, we work with a lot of large organizations. And one of the first things I do is I, I do, no matter who I engage with or who we engage with as a company, the first group of people I need to talk to are the decision makers and the business people. I spend 30 minutes, an hour with them, pretty much going through similar stuff. And then suddenly the angels start singing. Ah, I didn't realize SharePoint could do all that. The third step is you have to be realistic. Because once you realize the business potential of SharePoint, then everybody wants everything for nothing. You can only do so much as a business in IT, right? You gotta establish your roadmap. Now, what do we mean by establishing a social roadmap? You gotta map business needs to social tools or even SharePoint. Okay, how do you do this? Again, it goes back to my point. It's a very fundamental question. Oh, we're gonna do 2013, why? We're gonna do wikis, why? Right? We're gonna do these workflows, por qué? You gotta keep asking those questions. And, and how you answer these has to go back to the business, okay? So let me show you an example. So in, in my practice, one of the exercises we do, I'm gonna show you this example. Early on, regardless of what you're doing, right? They say, hey docs, help us with an upgrade, help, hey docs, help us with uh, taking advantage of SharePoint. We map business needs to SharePoint capabilities up front. So this is an exercise we call engineering. It's educating the users on the platform, but engineering business solutions. So in this example, this is for an 8,000 people organization. It's a, it's a county in Virginia. It's a government entity. And one of the first things we did is we interviewed key business groups. So on the left column, you'll see uh, uh, business groups, operations, HR department, finance department. And in, in, in each session, it's typically an hour, 30 minutes, hour session. I just ask them, look, what are your day-to-day -day business pain points? Tell me about it. And then you know, I give examples, and then they, they kind of understand what I'm talking about. So they'll start with, for example, hey, Docs, you know, we have this thing called the SLP creation. It's so manual. You know, we have to go to the network share, grab this file, email it to people. As they're describing that business process and business pain on column C, I'm mapping it to what SharePoint can do out of the box that can support that, right? Now, one of the very important points you have to remember is everything out of the box. You don't go custom coding, you don't go third party unless you can't do it out of the box, which means you got to know your SharePoint social tools. Uh, third party is the second option. Custom code is the last solution. If you have a so-called expert and you talk to them about your SharePoint needs and the first thing that comes out of their mouth, oh, we can build that web part in Visual Studio. Poser alert. A lot of SharePoint posers out. So we go through their different business needs, right? Operations, well, docs, we got this thing, emergency communications, premium paid for, a lot of this is email driven, blah, blah, blah. And towards the end of the conversation, I asked them, okay, operations, if there's one thing we can fix and automate and improve right now, what would that be? Docs is this thing, accident report reviews. I mean, lives are at stake. That's number one priority. Number two is emergency communications. So they rank their business needs as they know it. Because for me, I don't know their business. Even if you're IT, you don't know every single thing they do. So have them rank the importance of their business needs. Now, once we do this exercise where we identify the business needs and map it to SharePoint capabilities, or not just SharePoint, I mean, whatever the stack of social tools you have. The next point is you gotta analyze what the priority is. Because gang, you can't do everything. So what you do is you, have, you, you on column A, you have the different business groups, and now on column B, I flip the view with the different capabilities we've identified. Y'all see that? Okay, based on the business needs of HR, they'll need a list, a library, a uh, discussion board. How important it is it? Five, very important, just based on their business needs, you know, and almost always lists and libraries will come up as, as high priority. What's the effort to do that for HR? A two, what's a two? I have my standardization here, a two is for three person weeks, that's for my team skill set. now your team might be different. What's the business impact? Three, it's a high impact because if we improve the Onboarding process, performance, eval, that's a lot of cost savings, whatever. How reusable is that solution? Three, it's very reusable because we can templatize it and reuse it for the whole company, not only HR. What's a total business value? So we take the priority, the impact, and the reusability minus the effort. Nine is the total value. So now 
there's a quantifiable metric on the business value of a SharePoint feature for a group. Y'all see this? And the irony of all this, even if we pitch that SharePoint is a business platform, we don't go through this exercise, right? The only exercise we go through is either IT throws SharePoint out there or the business tells IT, I want SharePoint with no context, and it just doesn't match up. Is this helpful, by the way? Now, you have to look at the reality of IT. While we, we now have a measure on how important it is to the business, we got to look at how much can IT do or it cannot do. So if we look at this second section, what's the implementation impact for IT? If we build all that list for HR and so on, one might be, you know, it's 10 hours, we need to configure AD, we need to configure this database, whatever. What's the support impact, what's the training impact, what's the total impact of three? So now this is a great time to bring IT and the business back in the room and say, okay, business, this is what SharePoint needs. And then HR sees, wow, it's a nine, we gotta have it. IT goes, well, it's a three. We don't have budget for that for this fiscal, Maybe we'll do it for next fiscal. HR might go, well, no, 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 you don't understand. That means it's 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 you know it's greatly improving our onboarding process. We have to have it. Well, tell you what, HR, if, if that's so valuable to improve your business processes, why don't you pony up? That's the other conversation IT rarely have. In IT's mind, everybody's mind, IT has to spend for SharePoint, which is true. IT spends for the platform. But when we talk about business specific solutions that's going to help the business, have them pony up. Don't be ashamed about it. It might not be a lot of money, it might be another resource, train people, but have them engage with you and have commitment, you know, financial commitment and investment. Because as you know, you don't value what you don't pay for, right? And once you do that, you know, in, in this example, we went through a couple iterations, but they decided, you know, this is a three-phase rollout, phase one, phase two, phase three. It's a 15-month phase rollout of what SharePoint is for this company. Now, will it change? Yeah, it'll change, but now we have a baseline as to what the roadmap looks like. And if people come to me and say, I don't like how it looks, make it pretty, I go, let's go back to the Excel sheet. I don't see making it pretty as a business priority. Now, if it is now, don't get me wrong, we'll do it. Do you guys want that spreadsheet? You want it? Yeah. I'll send you. As part of roadmap development, look at developing a relevant governance plan. And when I say relevant governance plan, please, 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 for crying out loud, don't go to the Microsoft website, download a governance template, fill in the blanks, email them around, and say we have governance. That's what people do. And, and they question why it's not effective. Governance is a good thing, but it has to be relevant to your world, right? I mean, we live in a great country, but we're governed by laws, we're governed by the Constitution. Y'all with me? I doubt our forefathers went to a website called constitution.com and downloaded a template, emailed it around, and said, we have a Constitution. If they did that, we'd be all messed up today. So make it relevant. Make it and define it so that people understand what their roles and responsibilities are. The other aspect is, especially these days, as the SharePoint, as the SharePoint platform grows, have some kind of compliance strategy, right? Especially if you're in the legal field, healthcare, financial field. You know, we and we recommend our customers use a tool like this where on a, on a regular basis it generates a heat map, right? One of the key things I the customers is, do you have sensitive data in your SharePoint platform because you're a healthcare organization? No, we don't have SharePoint. We don't have sensitive data. We don't put PII in there. Okay, how do you know? Uh, prove it. Uh, you have it. I was in a life sciences conference last week. I was talking <coughs> pharmaceuticals and doctors. and I said, oh, we don't put you know, sensitive data. Okay, how do I know? So you can run a tool like this, it'll scale, and you can be very specific. Is this compliant to HIPAA, Sarbanes-Oxley, CFR Part 11? Is there any social security number there? Is there any, you know, uh, uh, performance evaluation or salary information? Think about that. If you want to invest in this platform for the whole organization, think about what your compliance strategy looks like. Step four, 
drive change to maximize social is you gotta identify a group channel. IT themselves can't do it. Because IT wants to take on all the SharePoint stuff, and that's not realistic. Because IT has a lot to deal with other than SharePoint. Yeah, you know, I, I have to fess up. My name's really not Ducks. It's Ducks L. My father's Jor L. My grandfather's Cal L. I have a movie coming up. <laughs> I thought I could do it all. I'm a Windows admin. My boss told me I'm the new SharePoint dude. On top of my day job, I thought I could roll out SharePoint to 5,000 people in two weeks. Failed miserably. Story of my life, guys. Because IT by themselves, while they, while they can do the technology stuff, who's doing your business engagement? You know, today, there's not a shortage of SharePoint jobs. But there's a shortage of appropriate SharePoint jobs. What are you talking about, Doug? You know, if you look for SharePoint jobs, there's only two titles that come Developer and administrator, right? While you need those, those aren't the full-time hires you will need right away. What do I need, Docs? If you're gonna invest in a full-time SharePoint person in your group or team, you gotta have that individual who can engage with the business, what I call SharePoint business analyst. It's that person who can talk to the business and map it to a SharePoint capability and shape the solution that's gonna drive business value. Unfortunately, Microsoft doesn't talk to them. How do I groom those people, Docs? Where do I find them? It's hard to find those people. So for us, for example, my team, I would get folks that are well-versed in uh, business analysis in the IT world, especially if they have Six Sigma background, business process analysis, and then train them on SharePoint, not the other way around. You will need that for your company. Another group of people you will need is everybody else in the company. You know, going back to my story with Miss Sally, she was a big proponent for SharePoint after what I showed her. Miss Sally is about to retire in two years is my cheerleader about SharePoint. Because she found business now. Another group of people who you want to help promote, evangelize, and be your champion are your executive admins. They are your executive's gatekeeper. If you help them get their job done faster, better, sooner, they will be a great advocate. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a uh, this is a newspaper clipping, uh, picture taken by Associated Press of a sport called Dragon Boat Rowing. Do you guys remember this sport? It's a big sport in Asia. It's canoeing. It's, it's essentially 20 people, and, and these boats are just racing. This is a picture of the Philippine Dragon Boat Rowing Team in 1994. And I'm the guy back there as part of the Philippine Dragon Boat Rowing Team. And I was saying, you know, we won, number one. And maybe two seconds after this picture was taken, I realized we won number two. <laughs> we lost half of a second to, uh, to China. Now, what's my point here? Right? By myself, we can't win. We had to have everybody in the team, and guess what? It wasn't an overnight thing. We spent Six months training in office. But without a team based approach, without if it's just a purely IT approach, you'll never get to the finish line. You know, one word of advice when we were training, our coach never said anything about how great our boat is, which was good. Our, our boat was, you know, high tech, fiberglass, lightweight, but he never talked about how great the boat is. He, talk, he always talked about the destination. He sold the destination. So my advice to everyone, stop selling the boat. Stop selling SharePoint. Sell the destination. Miss Sally, we're going to help you save two hours. We're going to help you not do overtime. We're going to help you better manage your projects using phone, iPad, whatever. Because you don't have to deal with all these clunky men. Last step. The last step is you have to deliver sustainable adoption. When we talk about adoption, People think of training. It's not enough. If there's two words you remember out of this presentation, is sustainable adoption. How do you sustain it through time? Right? You can't just keep pushing technology. You have to mold it around the business because the results you want is first and foremost, you want to drive excitement. You want people to be stoked. Wow, this is cool. I mean, I saw some faces lit up earlier when I showed Excel. Wow, that's cool. 
You want to facilitate change. People get their job done faster, better, sooner. And then lastly, you want to empower people and help them help themselves and their colleagues to take advantage of the product. To drive sustainable adoption, it has to be face-based. Uh, an example is I'm working with an organization right now, 100,000 people organization. They have SharePoint for nine years, and now we're embarking on a sustainable SharePoint adoption program. And the goal is, again, getting people get their job done faster, better, sooner with this investment that they have. So, five steps to drive culture change. One, you got to gain executive engagement. Develop relevant use cases. Establish your social roadmap. Identify, grow, and groom your champions. And then last but not the least, deliver sustainable adoption. What do you think, guys? Useful? Good. So, a couple of things. Uh, thank you for being here. If you can fill out the uh, white eval, so I, I left a white card there, I'll take that from you. I'll take your information and send you a recording of this session, the PowerPoint, in a copy of SharePoint for Project Management. Um, I've got my cards in the back and I have some brochures of my organization. But feel free to reach out if, if, if we can help you with your SharePoint implementation, your roadmap. Uh, we'd be more than happy to do so. Thanks again for being here and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.